Session 41, Part 2, Extract from a Room of One's Own, Virginia Woolf. Opportunities for Men and Women, Analysis of the Text. The present session discusses how the narrator turns to history to look for facts about the relationship between women and literature. The writer's experience at the British Library is shown. The narrator returns home disappointed at not having useful tidbit of truth from her researchers at the British Library. Once again, fiction is enlisted to help complete the history and to expose along the way the biases and omissions of canonical knowledge. She chooses to look into the lives of English women during the Elizabethan period. She reconstructs the experience of the 16th century women. Here, am I asking why women didn't write poetry in the Elizabethan age? And I'm not sure how they were educated, whether they were taught to write, whether they had sitting rooms to themselves. It's a virtue of Shakespeare's plays. She observes that they seem like enchanted spider webs to hang there completely by themselves. According to Virginia Woolf, history turns up little except a few terse statements about the legal rights of women in the early modern period. Imaginatively, she is of the highest importance Practically, she is completely insignificant. Some of the most inspired words, some of the most profound thoughts in literature fall from her lips. In real life, she could hardly read, could scarcely spell, and was the property of her husband. It would have been impossible, the narrator concludes from this tough experiment, completely and entirely for any woman to have written the place of Shakespeare in the age of Shakespeare. To illustrate this conclusion, she conjures the imaginary character of Judith Shakespeare. She compares the feasible situation for both of them. He could explore his life. Judith, his extraordinarily gifted sister, stayed at home. She was adventurous, imaginative as got to see the world, but she was not sent to school, no chance of learning grammar. All the opportunities would turn into horrible and hostile. She could possibly die of suicide. This is the consequence of a woman who would have had the genius of Shakespeare during his period. Thus, women in Shakespeare's days had had their genius a genius like Shakespeare's is not born among laboring, uneducated, servile people. This is how the life of a woman with Shakespeare's genius might have looked at the time, the narrator argues. Thank you.